Recently, I went to Embedded World North America. A great event if you want to get a sense of what's new for IoT and embedded developers in terms of hardware, in terms of software, as well as where Edge AI is going. And Michael and Jennifer on the New Arc booth, New Arc is an avid company, they both had a lot to say about not just how Edge AI is changing the way you need to do embedded development, but also how Avnet is helping with development kits actual hardware that can lead you to production and how they help you in the process of building your IoT devices. If you like this episode of the IoT Show, do not forget to subscribe to our channel. You put us a little like, check the box for notifications and so forth. That really helps us. Thanks. Enjoy. Hi everyone, this is the IoT Show, I'm Olivier, your host. We are at Embedded World in Anaheim, California, and we are on the New Arc booth, New Arc slash Avnet, right? Mm -hmm. I have Jennifer, Michael, uh, we'll do a round of introductions and then we'll talk a little bit about what embedded developers role is in that new era of AI. Jennifer, Michael, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, and thank being you casual. for being here. Yeah, absolutely. So let's go through a round of introductions. Jennifer, who are you? What is your role? Yeah, so I manage a global technical enablement for our strategic suppliers. So my team works with all the Avnet entities anywhere uh, in the world to make sure that the leading suppliers of semiconductor technology, uh, that that technology is available to our customers, it's accessible, <laughs> easy to use, showcase them the, the possibility. Awesome. Uh, what about Michael? Absolutely. Um, so I'm responsible for the enablement, right? So on Jennifer's team, uh, we make it easy for customers to take these boards and get started, get connected into AWS. And that's our number one job is to make sure that all the documentation from the GitHub standpoint, as well as any instructions that we provide, uh, customers are able to easily get connected. Sounds good. So we'll talk about what's required for embedded developers to understand, to know. But before getting to that, Jennifer, What's your feeling about AI, especially AI at the edge? Like, is it going somewhere? Is it just hype? Mm -hmm. What's up with it? So we've been waiting for it for so many years, right? It's been a lot of conversation and we're super excited about what's just happened even in the past year. Mm -hmm. uh, I think when ST announced the N6 and made it generally available a year ago last December with a true neural network on chip, that was when we you know, really started to see the, the proof was there, right? Okay. Able to do true vision AI processing on a microcontroller with the low power, plus all of the investments have been made by companies like ST and the tooling so that those AI models are actually trained and running efficiently on the microcontroller. So it is a reality, it's here. And all the other partners have done the similar, uh, or at least similar, similar products. Infineon just a couple weeks ago made their E84 PSOC Edge processor, again, with a true neural network on a microcontroller, right? Where you can yeah. actually do that AI processing at the edge. It is a reality, it is here. And the tooling to make it happen is also here. So yes, it's, okay. it, is, it is absolutely real and we're very, very excited about it. So. Actually, tools are here, technology is here, our scenario is here. As in, do we see use cases? Do you have customers who are coming to you guys say, I want to put that solution together. This is going to be my return on investment because that's an investment. So do you see these kind of scenarios coming up? Absolutely. I think customers are all at this point right now trying to experiment, right? They're trying to figure out what can it do and then how does it apply to their specific use case. And that's where we also as Avnet really try to put a lot of extra effort into helping customers through that initial process of understanding the technology and how it can be applied. Yeah. Uh, I, I love one of these demos that Michael put together over here. Yeah. Um, we took some, Michael took some driver monitoring system software, which it seems very common, right? People in cars and automobiles, you know, the alertness of the driver, but that exact same, those exact same models or scenario are perfectly applicable to an industrial manufacturing environment, right? And we have equipment that needs to, uh, and the worker's safety is of utmost important, mm -hmm. making sure that the worker is alert, right? So sometimes it's just about taking models that are being used in one scenario and understanding how they also apply and can be used in different scenarios. Yeah. Uh, and so that's often a lot of the conversations we're having with customers is, this is great, this is interesting, how does it apply to me? And a lot of that's kind of self-discovered you know, through that initial process of evaluating it. Sounds good. So Michael, you put together some of these demos? Yeah, absolutely. So you to pick one or two, like, tell me a bit about them. 
Yeah, so absolutely. So a lot of the things that uh, customers are that are pretty normal uh, in everyday life, you know, like being able to look at your phone and have it unlocked mm -hmm. by leveraging the NPUs that, you know, were built for those ex uh, specific applications. They've been seeing that since 2016, 2017. Sure. What's really new now is the fact that the tools are in the customer's hands, uh, wow. that the uh, vendors have given these NPUs and this acceleration over to users through their tool sets, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's our goal is to figure out, you know, if we take something like the driver monitoring system yeah. uh, that was applied to NXP, how do we leverage uh, the software tool sets in order to take advantage of that acceleration hardware at those very low power nodes mm -hmm. that they're providing? So, How hard is that all? I mean, we're talking to, here we're talking to IoT developers, embedded developer most often. Okay. I'll ask you after what really do they need to understand and know, but first, how hard is all of that to put together? Hard is not a, I, I don't think it's the right term, right? It's really about, you know, are we directing it towards the right persona? Um, one of the things that we've seen a lot is the fact that, you know, that the tool sets are coming from the hardware vendors. Okay. And so they're written in those same environments, you know, so we're not programming the device. I'm establishing the security. I'm establishing the connectivity. I'm also optimizing those models within that same, same tool flow. So that's new. Um, doesn't mean it's a different level of difficulty. It just means that it's really a different um, uh, target uh, target audience. Okay. Well, it's still embedded developers, right? Yeah. You have to put that in there. Yeah. There are some aspects of that embedded development that is new to them, forced, quote unquote, by AGI. Absolutely. Like as, once you once you have a device, an embedded device, let's say a traditional one that is out there, it's going to be there for the next ten years. Hopefully you don't have to update it because it's been well developed. It's real time. It's working. AI brings a level of, I wouldn't say uncertainty, but you will need to enhance your models. Yeah. They will depend on the environments. Sensors don't all act the same way. So now you are adding to the pile of things that the embedded developer has to do, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think, you know, of course, one way to add technology is to buy technology. And that's what I've seen a lot of the semiconductor partners do. Of course, Edge Impulse acquisition by Qualcomm was one of the more recent ones, but that wasn't the start. Even years ago, ST acquired Cartesium, right? So they added to their existing development tool software repertoire, right, AI. Mm -hmm. and, and we've seen other partners do very similar things. Of Infineon acquired Imagimob a couple of years ago. So it's not even really recent, right? They've been making these investments for a long time, understanding that they have to cater to the embedded developer. And who better to do that than those semiconductor companies that build those chips? Mm -hmm. So they have been extending that capability, uh, again, and making those investments, you know, and, and that started years ago. Okay. Yeah. So how is Avnet making it easier? Because I see simplifying edge AI, DevKit HQ. So what is the yeah. collection of tools, programs that you guys offer that help developers and better developers in particular get started faster, but also in the longer term, get to productization, not yeah. just proof of concept. So, um, you know, with the embedded developer, usually the start of any journey is with a low cost piece of hardware or a dev kit. Uh, and so as Avnet, we represent so many of these global suppliers. We have those dev kits readily available, right? And often they're very low cost. I love this Infineon kits, $50, $49. So very low, very accessible for the general population. Uh, Infineon's taken it a step further though. They've actually developed some commercial ready AI models, uh, very specific in function, like fall detection. Okay. Okay. Uh, but again, commercially viable models that can book and go to market with. What we do, though, is we take advantage of all these different tool chains and dev kits and all these different suppliers, and we make these projects with these AI models available and working. Okay. We add the cloud connectivity, so you can really think about it from a system perspective, right? So how do I get that alert when somebody falls to know that that fall and someone needs to be taken care of? That, that requires the cloud. So we piece all that together, and we at Avnet have taken an approach where we provide projects on GitHub for all these different dev kits, and we do it with a pre-compiled binary. We call it a quick start. Uh, okay. But we give them all the instructions to basically get the AI model, the project up and running as fast as possible so that they can see the technology works. And I think once a customer actually goes through that experience, they see it working, now they're more mentally invested to say, okay, now, okay, yeah. this actually does work, mm -hmm. right? It's worth my time and energy to go back and install all the tools. Yeah, because right. there's value, right? As soon yes, as you see exactly. it working, you say, oh, so that scenario is addressed. Right. 
So there's value. I'm going to save money there. I can create a new business model there. It's That's real. Right. That's right. Uh, customers and engineers, right, they have to justify the time that they're spending on any project or any new project they want to start. So they really need to see a validation. They need yes. that immediate gratification. It works, right? So we try to really emphasize that it just works. Mm -hmm. Give them something very simple to try and easy with little, very little to no investment from a financial or time perspective, yes. right? And now that they see it works and it's in their hands, now they are able to say, okay, I need to spend some time learning about this technology and taking it to the next level, right? So that's gotcha. really how we approach it as AppNet. And, and taking it to the next level is something you're still there with the customers on, right? So it's yeah. not just, hey, here's your proof of concept. Mm -hmm. So when you go to scale, to production, right. or want to go there, yeah. you're still there to help them, right? Absolutely. And, and one thing I haven't mentioned yet is we do have a middleware platform called IoT Connect. That's a product that App okay. makes available uh, with both AWS as well as Microsoft Azure. So customers can choose, you know, if they want to, which cloud provider they want to work with. Uh, and one of the things we really believe in, of course, we want to make sure customers are using something that's commercially viable, right? So this is not just demoware, right? This is an actual commercial platform that yeah. if you like what you've, the experience that you're working with, you can continue. You don't have to switch to something else or reevaluate another platform or, you know, just know that you're working with a platform that's hardened and ready for production, right? That that's sense. very important. That yeah. makes sense. Michael, let me ask you, for a season embedded developers, what is your recommendation? What is the one thing you would tell them, go learn that because you have to know about it? Absolutely. So it's the concept, right? The concept of uh, being able to take an application, apply a model to it, and then be able to learn how that model reacts and how to retrain that model and then push a new function or an added functionality to it. That's why we start off with you know, the, a lot of the uh, simple applications where I'm doing a face detect, maybe iris detect, learning about those different points on a face. So now they can start understanding how to use it, mm -hmm. right? And the next step then is how do I improve it or apply it to my application by training it on my data? Okay. And so I would say, I always tell people, just start off with something, right? Start off with that process. The process is going to be the same across all of these platforms. Okay. Uh, but once you've done that, then it's going to be very familiar to you when you stop it, step into different hardware, maybe a different uh, 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 supplier's version of acceleration and so forth. So that's what I would get started with is, you know, dive into a quick start. Learn how the model works, learn how to take that model and apply it to my application, and then start learning about the retraining of that model. Okay. All of the stuff we provided behind the scenes, like the OTA updates, like uh, for the model deployments and all that kind of stuff, just kind of comes with it and makes it a part of part of the application. Gotcha. What's the starting point, Jennifer? Where do we send people? Yeah. Yeah. So we have invested a lot of time and energy in our GitHub site. Yeah. I believe that's a you know a very engineering friendly environment. All the code is provided in source, right? So there's literally Avnet, IoT Connect GitHub. Search for it find it easily. We'll give you the QR code, of course, so you can get yep. right to it. Um, and there you'll find repos, you know, with all across all of these different suppliers, ready to go projects that can be downloaded and used on virtually any kit in minutes. Nice. Um, so that's, Who doesn't like a little kit with a GitHub project? That's right. That's <laughs> exactly. right. Very good. That's what you get. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for tuning in, Jennifer Michael. Thanks for your time today. Yeah. Have a good one. Thank it's a lot you. of fun. Appreciate it.